just what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graving these Baltimore Ravens choices for their decision that they're going to have to make on Lamar Jackson this offseason, uh, they became a whole lot clearer. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and this is probably going to be one of the hardest videos that I will ever have to make because the detail and the numbers and the breakdowns and all that, I, I'm, I really want to try to make this as clear as I possibly can for everybody so we can all have a full understanding of the possibilities that lie ahead uh, when it comes to Lamar and the Baltimore Ravens. So y'all please bear with me. Um, and if there's anything that I said or misspoke on, feel free to let me know because I make mistakes, plenty of them, probably more than anybody. Um, but we'll try to make it as clear as possible. Before we get into it, though, I, I got to give a special shout out to all of y'all. Thank y'all so much because we are slowly, slowly creeping up on 63,000 subscribers and that's insane to me um I, it's there's a lot of crazy people in this world it's a lot of crazy people in florida alone but the fact that almost 63,000 people decided to subscribe to this this channel now there were a lot along the way that unsubscribed too but 63,000 people decided to subscribe and stay subscribed to this channel after everything what really but hey but i appreciate y'all we all crazy in this thing together um and also special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron my guy john appreciate you uh and just thank you to everybody really man so anyway um lamar jackson we know lamar jackson is a pending free agent now we know lamar jackson ain't gonna sniff free agency um but the baltimore ravens they have some decisions to make when it comes to lamar jackson uh one of those decisions that they could make is offering him a long-term deal and coming to an agreement with him on a long-term deal um and that would be the hope that they can get it done but in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be something that ends up happening before a lot of other dominoes fall into place. Uh, things that we've talked about already, like the offensive coordinator, I think that's going to be important. What the Ravens do in free agency is also going to be important, how they move. And then a, a very pivotal point in this offseason, I think, is the draft. Because if they're going to trade Lamar Jackson... I think they would do it before the draft because they're going to want to get something right here, right now. They're not going to want to wait till next year to get draft picks for Lamar. If they trade him, they're going to want it this year. So if that's going to happen, it's going to happen before uh, draft time. But if Lamar Jackson is still here uh, after the draft, then that'll increase That'll increase the likelihood that he remains with the Ravens. It won't be a sure thing, but it'll increase the likelihood that he does stay. Uh, but, I think before Lamar Jackson signs anything, I think he's going to want to see how the Ravens move. But um, with how the Ravens move, that can be dictated by a lot of what happens with the NFL. But the NFL today, according to Tom Pelissero, the NFL informed teams today that the 2023 salary cap will be a record $224.8 million per club. So the salary cap is a little over 224 mil. So now that's that's clear. So now every team knows what they have to work with. They know how they can move and operate and maneuver and finagle and do this. They know. Now, the Ravens, the cap space that they have, according to Brian McFarlane, Ravens salary cap. Y'all know him. He is on point with all that salary cap stuff. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. But he said that the Ravens, uh, with that number, this will leave the Ravens with 27.8 mil in cap space. So they have a little under 28 mil in cap space moving forward. That's with their pending free agents. That's with the guys that they signed to the future reserve deals. That's with everything. Everybody who's on the books, that's including Roquan Smith, his escalators. I think Devin Duvernay's escalator, Matt Abike, uh, and maybe some other guys too. But that is what the Ravens have right here. Well, not right here right now, but the start of the league year. That's what they starting with. Unless they make some other moves. But that's the number that they're starting with. Now, um, this is where it may get a little confusing, but I'm going to try to make it as clear as I possibly can. Uh, so, again, my apologies in advance if it is confusing, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. So, um, Brian McFarlane, he, he tweeted out that for there, there, there's a couple of different franchise tags that the Ravens could apply to Lamar Jackson. There's three different franchise tags. One is the exclusive tag. One is the non-exclusive tag. And one is the transition tag. 
So we are going to talk about uh, all three of them. So um, we'll talk about the non-exclusive tag first. The number, the salary cap number for the non-exclusive tag uh, would be 32.416 mil. So a little less than 32.5 mil. That would be the cap hit that the Ravens would have to take. That would be the number that Lamar would take. Uh, if it was a non-exclusive tag now, let's look at exactly what the non-exclusive tag is And this I'm referencing a CBS article that they put out breaking everything down So it says the non-exclusive tag allows a player to negotiate with other NFL teams But if he signs an offer sheet with another club his team has five days to match the offer uh, If the offer is not matched his team will receive two first round picks as compensation from the signing team so that was pretty self-explanatory. Say, for instance, just to use it as an example, say, for instance, Lamar, that if the Ravens give him the non-exclusive tag and the Dolphins, just, it's just an example, but if the Dolphins sign Lamar to an offer sheet and they sign him to, just for example, 250 mil deal fully guaranteed, the Ravens would have five days to match that offer, the 250 mil fully guaranteed, and if they don't, then Lamar Jackson will become a Dolphin. But the Ravens, they will receive compensation in the form of two first-round picks from the Dolphins. So that was, that's how the non-exclusive tag works. Now, uh, for the exclusive tag, the exclusive tag is the average of the top five QB cap numbers as of right before the draft. Uh, and that should be around 45 mil. So um, with the exclusive tag, the exclusive franchise tag, it's about 45 mil, but a player cannot negotiate with other teams with the exclusive franchise tag. So there's no negotiations with the exclusive franchise tag. You either take it or you leave it. That's it. The team has the control in that one. It can't no other teams interfere. They can still trade you now. With every tag, you can still be traded or you could be moved or whatever. But with the exclusive tag, you can't talk to nobody. Well, legally at least. Cause you know tampering be going on but anyway so that's that one um and again that one is around 45 mil now there's another tag there's a transition tag and you know what my apologies because i did not see how much that one would be but that one is pretty irrelevant because you know ravens ain't going to use it and let's listen to why the transition tag um is based on the average of the top 10 salaries at a player's position uh using the same method uh, methodology as non-exclusive franchise tag calculations but uh the teams have the same right of refusal as with the franchise tags but they do not receive any draft choice compensation for declining to match an offer sheet so basically with the transition tag uh another team could offer we'll use miami again for an example they could offer lamar jackson a deal but if the ravens don't match it okay they don't match it lamar will move on to miami but the ravens will not receive anything in return no draft picks, no compensation, no nothing. So that franchise tag is not going to be applied like at all. You know it ain't going to be applied at all. So we ain't even really got to worry about breaking that one down. Um, but still, you know how it works now. So again, we got the non-exclusive franchise tag. That's where Lamar and they, they could talk with other teams. Other teams could sign them to an offer sheet and whatnot. And if he signs and the Ravens match, then the Ravens keep him. But if he signs the offer sheet and the Ravens don't match whatever he got offered, then he will go to that other team and the Ravens will get two first round picks. That's the non-exclusive tag. The exclusive tag, he can't negotiate with anybody. And then the transition tag, he can negotiate. And if he goes to another team, if Ravens don't match the offer, then they wouldn't receive anything. But now um, what the Ravens are going to do it's not clear to us. I mean, I'm sure they got their different plans in place, but um, everything is a lot more clear now because they know what the uh, the salary cap is going to be and they know how much salary cap space they have, even though the cap is cap. But and then they know the amount of all the different franchise tags and what they entail. So. I really hope that we explain this clearly to everybody. My apologies if this confused you even more, uh, but I just really wanted the information to be out there so people could understand uh, all the possibilities and what everything means. So when you hear, like, because I know when, when, when you hear like franchise tag or you hear non-exclusive tag or transition tag or, or, or exclusive tag, it, it can be confusing. Cause I know it's confusing for me. 
<laughs> it's definitely confusing for me. So looking at all this, this helped me understand it a lot more. So hopefully the same thing happened to y'all. But anyway, Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like I hope Lamar Jackson isn't with everything, we out. Yeah, this feels like a dream.